All right there folks, welcome to another fishing adventures and today we're in a very, very windswept, freezing cold venue called Popperton Lakes just outside of York. It's a venue I've never fished before. I had to walk up here yesterday and it looked really, really good. Um, the, there's four lakes up here. The one I'm fishing on today is called Railway Lake. And basically it's called that because there's a railway line just the other side of that fence. Um, yesterday when I came up, there was a little bit of a breeze and there were a few fish showing and it just looked really, really good. So I come up here today and lo and behold, it is blowing an absolute hoolie, okay? So it's going to be incredibly difficult to uh, get anything going, I think, with the pole due to the wind. But having said that, I've, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it anyway. It's, this is like an introduction to autumn fishing. It's, it's going to be like this. So you've got to kind of weigh, weigh up your options, basically, what's going to be best. And with that in mind, what I've done is I've set up a bomb rod um, just to chuck out, just to the tip of that island and I'm, I'm just going to either feed hard pellet or just some for hookers on the oak and see what happens. I've also got some corn, a few maggots and I've also dampened up some, some micros. Now if you saw the Facebook post, uh, what I've actually used to dampen these is the yellow for hookers. I diluted them in water just to make basically a yellow water and they look absolutely mint and they smell disgusting as usual but I was going to feed those in just with a tiny tiny pole pot okay just a tiny little cad pot like that if you can see that it's literally the same sort of size as one of those fruit shoot lids um, but these are just um, stick on your pole easy you don't have to mess around and away you go um, depth wise in autumn I would always say try and look for about three foot of water if you can and start there uh, because the fish now they're not going to be necessarily in the margins until that sun comes out in the afternoon okay if you get that window of opportunity go for it you, you've got to really really keep an eye on what's happening elsewhere so what i've done i've had a good plumb up the deepest water i could find is literally that which is it's probably what we're going to give there two foot literally just over two foot and in this peg it's the same all the way across the there's no deeper water anywhere the only way it do, or the only place it does change is i've got an overhanging tree just in that corner to my right and it is literally two inches deeper there um so it, it it could be tricky it really could be tricky um, but if it's like that all around the lake the fish are going to be used to it anyway whether it'll have an effect today i don't know so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kick off and just chuck that bomb onto that tip of the island i'm going to give that 20 minutes half an hour just to see what happens but while i'm doing that i'm just going to drop in a few micros just on that pole line okay um i've got a marker that's fixed in the water there's a little spike sticking up in the water so I've, I've plumbed up accurately with that the the edge of my pole is lined up with the back leg of my seat box so i know i can get it in the same place every single time now with it being so windy i am going to have to stick a back shot on this um on this float but I'll, I'll show you that when i come to it um but yeah stick around we'll see what happens as i say it's a brand new venue for me and this is time now to put my money where my mouth is in it because i've been giving you all these tips how to approach a new venue, new lakes, what you should be doing, all that sort of jazz. So it's time to put it into practice for you. So stick around, let's see what happens. Right then, so that is in. I'm just gonna slacken that tip off a fraction as well um, 
don't want it too tight because this is gonna I think when it goes it's gonna go um, so we'll see there we go fish on see that didn't take long at all did it really oh he's gonna try and get me in those though oh he's off he was off he was straight into that <laughs> nice big patch of uh, rushes just got me in there so what i'm going to do while that's in i'm just gonna pop in a few micros and just feed that pole line because uh, i forgot to do that didn't i too busy yakking other stuff you see and we'll start just trickling a bit of bait into there a few of these micros not many just enough to get some in there You've got to kind of fish it like it was a match of two hours and it was bitterly cold this morning. And it, it were pouring down literally solidly for about 48 hours of freezing cold rain as well. So it, it's going to have an effect and it's going to slow the fish down. But if, if you can catch, say if you split your half, your match in half and you catch say 10 fish, eight or 10 fish in that first half of the match, it'll give you a good foundation to build on in the second half of the match when that sun comes out and everything warms up a little bit and you can start maybe getting a few more regular bites put together or those F1s will switch on and stuff like that. So the, the key, especially in autumn, is not to panic in those first couple of hours, two and a half hours. Don't panic. As long as you're getting the odd fish in the net, as I say, you only really need to catch four an hour. So that's one every 15 minutes. And if it's if it's a good good lake with plenty of carp in, it, it, that'll give you a good weight in that first half of the match when other people are going to really struggle. Do you know what I mean? So it's all about just being patient. I really, really want to start firing a few loose offerings over there, but it ain't going to get there with this wind. It's just going to spread everywhere, and I really don't want that. Ah, nightmare. Right then folks, so you can see how windy it is, okay? And what I've done is that I'm gonna put a back shot on here, okay? Cause I've got not much line really between pole and pole tip, uh, pole float and tip rather. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove a nice big chunky double A shot on there. And what that'll do is it will the shot will just counteract some of the wind around the float tip so you should get a lot better presentation okay that's the theory anyway now I don't know if you can see this on here but what I've done is because it's so sure shallow I've actually got quite a light float on okay and I've just got I've got four number eights and two number ten shot on there and I've got that on a tiny little two inch hook length purely and simply because it is too shallow and i want to get a shot as close to that hook as possible because that that is the once that shot that's closest to your hook gets dislodged that's what's going to indicate on the floor okay um so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go in with a white little two in one i'm going to feed one in with a few micros and we'll see what happens. Now well, there's been uh, other than those, uh, that first fish I lost, like a total numpty in that weed, uh, or the rushes rather, there's not really been much else happening over there uh, with, the, with the bomb. So we'll swap onto the pole and see if it's, uh, if it's too windy We'll take a section off, because uh, as I say, it's the same depth all the way across, really. Um, but I wanted to pick somewhere that was relatively, like two thirds of the way across, just to give me a few options, really, in the open water, but we'll see. So, get that lined up with the back of there, and that far back marker.
Drop those in. And we'll see. So hopefully that back shot should just help keep that floor in place and it is, it's uh, the wind's blowing on that, making it move around a little bit, so it's it's taking off the pressure on the on the float actually. As I say, these conditions are horrendous. Oh my days, man. Oh man. Has bait come off? Yeah, it's had a bite then and missed it, but it's too, uh, it's almost too windy to fish out there. So I might have to take a section off um, and do that, because it, it is horrendously windy. That is, uh, it's making it impossible really with the presentation so just gonna move that up a little bit actually right then so it was a pretty instantaneous bite though wasn't it so what we'll do is we'll do the same again one of them a few micros and a white one on the oak and again, it's this time of year where softer baits are going to work better, basically, because they're easier for the fish to digest. Um, if you feed them hard pellets, they'll probably have three or four, then they'll get full and they'll go away and digest them. Um, whereas with softer baits, it's easier for them to digest it straight away. It's like maggots, you can, you can feed maggots quite heavily in winter and not fill them up too much um, and it's the same with corn and stuff like that even though corn is a big bait you can feed a little bit with it with some micros um, oh man oh this is totally horrendous now right, I'm thinking it's gonna be easier to fish with a section less I'll we'll take that off anything to aid presentation is going to be key especially wind and uh, and stuff like this because it's not just constant it is gusting um, and as you can see it is horrendous um, but on days like this you've got to make the best of what you've got basically so And again, bite-wise, you're not looking for many, you're just looking for a couple of fish. Just to keep you ticking over, basically. Jesus, man. I am not liking this, folks. At all. Oh my days. What a nightmare. So, it might even be worth knocking another section off, actually. We'll see. I'm going to use the same far back marker anyway. Um, yeah, I'm going to fish to that joint. So, I've got a spare section behind me. Lad who came around to take, uh, take the peg money today, he, he sort of like said that that was uh, ideal distance, about five, six metres. So,. We'll follow his advice as well. Um, there we go. <clears throat> Seems like a decent fish. Tangly, whatever he is. Looks like a lovely mirror. Whoa, he's trying to get me in that snag down there. Come on. Oh, 
No, no, could be a big ginormous F1 this. Can't quite see. Whoa, come on. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> ah. Clonker. Absolute clonker. There we go. There we go, folks. So yeah, decent, uh, good start that, an absolutely good start. And there you go, my friend. Perfect. And that's what it is all about, is just trying to get off the mark, basically. Um, find a few of those early fish. Hopefully there'll be a few more there. Settle into that rhythm and just, uh, just keep plugging away, basically. Well, that's a great fish to start with. And that more than makes up for losing that, that one in the, uh, in the rushes earlier, on the bomb. So I'm gonna go straight back in. Little presser micros, one of the two in ones, and away you go. So yeah, that was a good start, a good fight as well. So we, we know there's a, a few fish milling and they the wanna have a little bit of a feed. Um, again, I don't wanna go crazy and start filling it in too much. Put it in, oh, missed him. Dang it. Is there a bait still on there? Can't tell if there is. Yeah, there is. Right then. So yeah, um, it's, yeah, there's a few fish there now. But I still don't want to start feeding in loads. Um, we're, we're just going to have to feel our way into it and just see. Because I don't want to kill it off. Especially with this wind. Because it's going to be difficult to start up another swim. Especially on the pole. I don't want to be messing around too much. So I'd rather feed a little bit. Get a fish. Feed a little bit more. And, and just feel my way into it that way. I, I don't want to attract a ton of fish into my peg. Ideally, I want to be just fishing from one at a time, if that makes sense. And there we go, straight away again. Um, and, and just attract them in. If you get tons and tons in there competing, the chances are you're going to mess your peg up. Um, whereas if you're feeding a little bit with each putting and stuff, it um, just makes it a little bit easier, really, to manage. Um, oh, get in the net. And there we go. That's another, that's a nice common. There we go, lovely fish, about a pound that, if that. But again, it's, um, it's a good steady weight builder. Um, especially in this, now I did bring my counter with me today. So yeah, my, my plan would be, um, if this was a match, uh, I know they, they have a few matches up here on Sundays, so I might nip up and do one, who knows, we'll see. Uh, but my plan, if this was a match, uh, would be a plug away on here, just keep an eye on the lake, see what happens, and then what I would do after a little bit of time is just set up a maggot line. Um, somewhere just so I could just just feed in tons and tons of maggots and draw those fish in um, a little bit shallow maybe get some good good sized skimmers in there and silvers and stuff uh, draw those f1s in as well and then it just gives you options later on if if this line dies completely then it gives you an option to drop on rather than firing the bomb out you can drop onto your maggot line and just see and, and just rotate it and see but Whenever I'm catching fish or getting indications on this line, I would stay on it, to be honest. Uh, I don't see any reason at all to start looking elsewhere for, for bites as yet. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a nice bream, is that? 
thought it was a bit of a lazy back. <laughs> it just kind of, the float kind of lifted a little bit and then slowly disappeared. I wondered what was going on. So yeah, tackle wise on this um, pole rig, uh, my main line is 014 and my hook length is 012. And that little hook length is just two inches long onto a size 18 um, Guru F1 pellet hook. I've, I've really, really slimmed down everything now. Um, all the chunky pole floats there back in the shed. The, the tip on this one's just 1.2 mil. Really, really fine, really, really delicate. And it, it will literally show up anything and everything that's in the area. Um, and that's what you want, especially for those F1s, because they do really, really do shy bites sometimes. Especially when it's getting colder and they're shoaling up a little bit. They don't want to expend a ton of energy charging all over so they'll just come up mouth it and and slowly drop back down and sometimes you can just miss them if your bristles too thick it's not going to show up as much so i'll go as as fine down as as you can see basically yeah you've got to be um even more accurate as well with your feeding in winter um Again, it's just because you're setting that trap for that one fish, really. Um, unless it's a mega, mega hot day and you want to draw a ton of fish in, you're best off just laying a nice little pile, put your pellet over the top, and just let them come in and hoover it up and then start again, just set traps. I found it really does work best. So if you're enjoying the video and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well so you'll be aware as soon as we upload any new content and uh, if you want to get involved on uh, our facebook page just uh, click the link below uh, join the group and get involved let's give this another 10 seconds Zero. Oh, bloody hell. I had a bite then and missed it on the zero. I knew I'd, I knew that had happened. I hate it when that happens. And now I'm in a mahoosive tangle. Oh, there we go. That's a laggy puller. <laughs> ah, dear. Where is he taking me? Oh, my days. He is gone. He is gone. So yeah, winter elastics. <laughs> this one's having a laugh, isn't he? Oh my days. Oh my days. Ah. ah dear, so yeah, the bites can take a little while to come, but they come eventually bead on the elastic shot all the way up as well so it's going to look like there's 808 inches falling off the edge oh man this one is pulling jesus yeah this is uh, just an 8 to 10 uh, dan's pink solid elastic and it's uh, absolutely perfect for for winter. Absolutely perfect. Oh man! It's a chunk. If ever there was one, where's my hook gone? Oh, he's unhooked himself as well, so that's all good. Yeah, there we go. Another couple of pounds. Can't really show you because he's having too much of a fit. I've got the hook stuck in my jeans and my uh, waterproofs. Jesus, it's all going peat tong today. In it, folks. Oh, that's a good scrap. That's a good two and a half. Nice, solid, wide fish. That as well. Very wide in the shoulders. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed a little bit more because um, that it, it took a little bit of while to come. Uh, but initially, after two or three minutes, it lifted a little bit and then just slowly started drifting. So I, I lifted but there was nothing there so there's obviously fish in the swim mopping bits up 
and I think he's just come wobbled along seen me up bait and thought oh I'll have a bit of that um, so I'm just gonna up that just put in five of the uh, Fiukas just red and white cap that off with the micros and we'll go again because if the stamper fish are coming out like that I don't mind waiting uh, between bites um, because it, it's worth it they're a really really good solid weight builder those fish nice and chunky so again accuracy is is key as well got to make sure that feed is going in the same place um, make sure that hook bait is bang on top of it as well and it's always worth especially this sort of time of year just fishing slightly over depth just so it, it anchors it on the bottom as well um, this this wind is horrendous it's causing a little bit of tow now as well so oh there we go he's off we a jumper a jumper oh he's done me damn it probably a foul hooker that probably a foul hooker it's going very grey folks <laughs> it is looking decidedly grey uh, this <laughs> oh man this wind now is making it almost impossible to actually see the float it's just oh man it's horrendous it's chopped it up that much it's I had a nice little area of, of like dark water in a shadow um, and now it, it's it's that windy it's it's like a zebra and it's it's making that float horrendous to see absolutely horrendous so this has been in about four or five minutes um and it it, it took less than that when we were getting the the bites earlier on when we when we first tried it um i have got a different hook bait on I'm, i've just gone with a hard pellet but we've had a couple of liners but but no bites or anything like that so it's telling me there's fish in the area but they're not wanting that particular hook bait so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring it back in um swap back over onto the a couple of the white neons and see if that makes a difference um i'm going to give that five or six minutes on that if we don't get a bite with that what i'm going to do is i'm going to pop on a bit of corn and just see and it, it, it's you keeping your options open just just trying new things rather than just sat here waiting for that one fish to come along if you know there's fish there but they're not interested in your bait try something different give it give it a couple more minutes and, but try something different always have something else as an option um and and just say just just feel your way into it that's all you can really do it's um it, it can be a bit soul destroying when you know something does work but it's not working on that particular day but that's fish for you they are uh, finicky and especially at this time of year they are proper moody um, I have actually got some four mil and six mil expanders with me as well just to try on that pole line um, just to see but I was happy with the fish we were getting on the fuel because then it just dried up a little bit and I, I did try all three colours but it didn't produce a bite so I fed it, rested it and this is now why we're trying the bomb um, so we'll see but yeah I'm going to bring this in let's go with some crazy crazy colours right, what's happening with that it's all going a bit peat tong isn't it cover that up that'll do keep them in there actually out of the sun Jobs are good and right then. Right then. <sighs> Wozers. Right then. Let's try. Nice neon pink. See if we can't instigate an angry bite because that would definitely pee me off if that turned up in me uh, in me home. <laughs> I'm just going to feed a few more into this inside edge here. I'm not ready for that? Do we covering them up? There we go. There we 
we go. Tempted him at last. Beauty, beauty. Look at that, that's a clonking fish. Lovely, lovely condition. Beautiful fish. Look at that. Can't argue with a condition like that. Absolutely beautiful. And that was on the two uh, pink neon fiukas. Just for a change, it was I was I was getting tons of liners getting tons of line there's indications that, that there were fish there but I wasn't getting any takes on on anything really so I just thought something a bit bright and a bit garish might just be enough to tempt a fish and there we go proof in the pudding it's always always worth changing baits um, and trying different things um, just keep your options open the, there's no point sat waiting for something to possibly happen when you can be trying different things in the hope of, of actually making something happen. Do you know what I mean? It, it can be difficult to, to keep that mindset of I've got to change things, I've got to keep trying things, but once you've got it, and once you're into that habit and the routine of doing it, it, it just becomes second nature. And after a certain amount of time, if nothing's working after five minutes, you think, right, I'm going to give it a rest, I'm going to try something else. And again, even something simple like changing hook baits can have a massive difference. So, all about keeping your options open, especially this time of year. Trying to look for when there's a bit of a look, bit of a die down in the uh, in the wind, just to get this uh, rig back out where I want it. Really, um, ideally, I want to be fishing. In that mid water, uh, middle of the peg, but it's horrendous with that. Uh, oh, and a bite straight away then. Did that bait come off? No, good. Um, the fish are there, it's just presentation is absolutely horrendous. Um, so I've got to kind of pick my moments when I can drop into it on the pole. Hopefully, if it dies down a bit now, the wind, we might be able to string another three or four fish together. Um, just to give us that little bit of a boost, because there's tons of bubbles coming up now. There's, there's fish definitely feeding down there. Still loads of bubbles coming up there around my flow. It's fizzing. There's, there's fish there. That I've, I'm assuming the bream or little skimmers, but I don't really care as long as the fish, do you know what I mean? It's... Uh, You can't be massively selective, that's the thing. Especially this time of year, you, you've got to just catch anything that's in your peg. And if you're using baits that will catch everything, then you stand a better chance. You really do. That'll be stone cold. Mm hmm. Wait, wait, there we go. Ah. Whoa, ho, ho, come back, fish. Jesus Christ. Has he done me? He has the bagger. That was a proper clonking fish as well. That was just on that inside edge. I just thought I'd drop in and see. See if we can tempt another. Right, it's just too... Um, too precarious now to try and fish that uh, middle line. It's uh, crazy, absolutely crazy. So we'll try this inside line again, um, see if his mate's there or something and uh, 
and see. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's a proper beast, this one. Oh, he's heavy as well, heavy fish. Go straight in the net. Not much of a fight, but God, he was a plodder. He was a plodder. This one. Oh. Well, see, there was quite a bit of, of, of feed in there. Not a huge amount, and I've not been feeding it often. Um, only when we've dropped in on it. So th there's a chance there's going to be a, a, a quick fish to be had. I think. Hopefully, that's the plan. Anyway. Um, Oh, missed him, damn it. That back shot is really, really helping though as well. Just uh, with the presentation, helping keep that float still. Just where we want it. So there's definitely a few moving around now. They're milling about, aren't they? Um, so they're gonna be milling around that point of that. Oh, there we go. Yay. <sighs> Oh, Bream, yeah, I thought it was a bit of a delicate bite. Superb weight builders. Get him back in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that bomb rod out and I'm just going to see if we can't get something out of that corner now. I think it's uh, it's about time we had that big bonus carp. Um, something nice to finish the... Uh, the session on. Uh, we'll see, other than a slimy bream, but that was a good fish actually, I like that. That was a good, good fish. Oh, there's a few topping out there, look. And yeah, there we go, look, just two, uh, two white for Yuka Neons on the bend of that hook. Absolutely mega. There we go. So that is in there, I need to move that around a little bit, don't we? Uh, try and bury that line although with this wind and stuff it is horrendous it just uh, this is not ideal it's not really how you uh, need to be fishing a feeder um, uh, or a bomb even um, should always have that tip as close to the water as you can physically get it but I would uh, there's just no way I, I can do that today, unfortunately. Um, I'll see, just try and flatten that bend off as well. We fish on, there we go. Jubilees, man. Lovely jubilees. Oh, man. There we go, folks. Absolutely lovely fish, that. Lovely jubilee. Right then, get him unhooked. It's been so it and miss, the, the, the wind has been horrendous. I mean, literally horrendous today. Uh, it's been blowing a gale. You couldn't really fish the pole accurately uh, just because presentation suffered um, with, with it gusting. If it were constant, you could probably work with it, but it were gusting and then the sun had come out and you you'd just glare out the water completely. Um, 
which was a total nightmare but we've strung together a good few fish and and that's what it's all about it's you, you can't rock up in autumn and and expect 80 hundred pound out um when the the weather's so iffy and up and down and stuff like that you you've just got to work for it and and maximize every opportunity really um again starting really negatively setting little traps fishing for bites and and just keep repeating the process really and you, you'll you'll soon get into that rhythm and, and work out what the fish want and hopefully after lunchtime after one o'clock when when the weather changes and the sun comes out that's the time to start feeding um so always have like a backup ready i mean i've got a pint of maggots with me i've not even fed any um i've got some corn as well as a change bait and some expanders for the hook but i've not not really used them i didn't feel that i needed to set up anything else other than the lines um that i've got set I just had a massive line of then on tip um and it, it's worked well but again think about the baits you're using at, at this time of year a couple of six mil pellets will fill a carp up and then they'll go away and digest them because it's colder so you've got to think maybe more about using the softer baits and stuff like that um so yeah just just feel your way into it as as always really is what I'm, I'm trying to say i guess and just keep your options open but if you've enjoyed the episode give it a thumbs up leave a comment below as well because that's always good um, i love having a chat with you guys and uh, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and when you do make sure you hit that notification bell as well and you'll be notified as soon as we upload a new video or post something in our community section and again if you want to get involved on facebook uh, come over and have a chat with us on there uh, there's a link in the description so still getting the odd little tiny tap on this uh on this tip but it's it's frustrating the pants off me because it's not going around <laughs> um i'm into the last dying seconds of this session i've got literally one minute left and then i need to pack up like billy or um so if ever you needed to pray to the fishing god it's now because i need that tip to go around i need one more bonus fish i think and then i'll be happy um all right there folks thank you so much for watching uh stick around there's plenty more to come um, i'll definitely be back up at this venue again it, it's been an absolutely thoroughly enjoyable day um so yeah thank you for watching if you haven't already hit subscribe give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below as well that'd be fantastic and i'll catch you all later bye